Hi everybody, Zach here with Scorpion Racing Products. Just wanted to take a minute today to go over all the features and benefits and the more technical details related to Scorpion Racing Products product offerings so you have all the information you need to be able to confidently sell it. So at Scorpion Racing Products, uh, we make various valve train components um, for domestic V8, V6, and inline six cylinder applications. Uh, we make a variety of product offerings for different applications, different types of racing, different types of uh, engine use. So what I wanted to go over today is basically all the offerings that we have, what the differences are between them, and what applications we make them for. Uh, we've been in business for 25 years now, so we have quite a few product offerings and different series. Uh, we make rocker arms for small block Chevy, small block Ford, big block Chevy, big block Ford, uh, Pontiac, Oldsmobile, Buick, AMC, Jeep, uh, and again, V6 and inline six cylinder. Uh, in addition to our rocker arms, which are our main product offering, we also make stud girdles or valve train stabilizers as some people call them. So our stud girdles, uh, we make for small block Ford, small block Chevy, and big block Chevy. Uh, they're for the standard OE uh, stud spacing. They won't fit some of the aftermarket heads where the studs are moved around. Uh, we do sell these separate from our rocker arms as well. So if you have a customer that needs a stud girdle uh, and it has a stock head or a stock style head with non-modified geometry as far as stud locations, our stud girdles will work for that. Uh, in addition to that, if you have a customer that has some other manufacturer stud girdle and has our rocker arms, we do make our VTS polylocks that are compatible with not only our stud girdle, but all of our competitors and other manufacturer stud girdles as well. And they do have the geometry in the nut itself to make sure that it clears our rocker body. So the other manufacturers who sell their stud girdle or valve train stabilizer with polylocks, maybe a different height, this boss that the stud girdle clamps onto might be lower in some cases or higher in others, uh, where there's too much clearance or not enough clearance, um, moving the stud girdle too close to the valve cover or moving it too close to the rocker body to where the polylock will actually interfere with the rocker body. So we do sell the nuts, the VTS nuts, valve train stabilizer nuts individually. So if you do have a customer that is using our rockers with a competitor's stud girdle, you can have them call us or you can contact us and we will be able to get you just the VTS nuts that are compatible with our rocker body to make sure everything clears the way it's supposed to. Uh, in addition to the VTS or stud girdles, we also make several different types of rocker arms for several different applications. Uh, the first being a pedestal mount. Uh, small block forwards and big block forwards coming from the factories, they have a pedestal mount, which is basically either a channel cut in the cylinder head or a U-channel, a stamped piece of steel that a pedestal sits into. And then the rocker actually sits on that pedestal and it bolts from the top onto the cylinder head. So that's how it attaches. Uh, the LS style engines from GM are also pedestal mount from the factory. So we do offer pedestal mount rockers for small block forward, big block forward, and LS. And then we also offer pedestal mount rockers for the Chrysler Magnum, the 5.2 and 5.9 liter engines as well. Uh, the pedestal mount rocker arms are uh, various ratios and we also offer them in adjustable configurations as well. So on the back side, instead of just having a push rod seat that would be in the body itself um, and there's no, nothing on top, we actually have an adjustable uh, push rod seat where it's just an adjuster, just like you would see in a shaft rocker assembly, to where you can actually adjust the push rod seat location within the rocker itself, which is very useful for uh, push rod applications with pedestal mounts, where you have a little bit of variation if the machining's been done to the head or the block, and you're worried about preload on a hydraulic lifter, this will give you the flexibility to be able to adjust for all those variables without having to worry about shimming up the pedestal, things of that nature. Um, so we do offer pedestal mounts for those applications. Uh, the majority of our rockers are stud mounted. Um, so we offer several different configurations of stud mount rocker arms as well. We have what we call our race series, which is our original series of rocker arm. It's the most full body design, can take 950 pounds of open valve spring pressure. Um, so it's very, very strong. And this is actually uh, our most popular uh, offering that we see as far as sales volumes go. So we offer these for small block Chevy, small block Ford, big block Chevy, big block Ford, and the small block Ford geometry is very similar to the uh, Buick, Oldsmobile, Pontiac, and AMC. So we offer them for those as well. Um, we offer break-in rockers as well. So not just the 1.5 through 1.83 ratio that you would need for the actual engine. But if you have a flat tap at cam that needs broken in, uh, we do offer 1.3 ratio rockers for the small block and 1.5 ratio rockers for the big block. So you don't have to worry about uh, the break-in cycle as far as loads on the camshaft and the lifter face while it's in that break-in cycle. 
So we do have the race series rockers. They come with a 600,000 diameter roller. We offer them for 3 8 and 7 16 studs. Uh, they would have a different trunnion in the center as well. Uh, these are all our 7,000 series alloy bodies, all made from billet extrusion, uh, all done in-house in our Ocala, Florida facility. And we have aerospace quality principles that we incorporate as well into the manufacturing processes, first article inspections, final article inspections, and quite a few other processes that ensure the quality of the product and consistency throughout production runs. Um, so this is our original uh, race series offering for stud rocker applications. Uh, we also have what we call our, our endurance series, uh, which is a more small profile. So it's been lightened up, uh, changed the moment of inertia, optimized that quite a bit, lightened it on the valve side on the nose. Uh, these can take 750 pounds of open valve spring pressure. And they also are beneficial for applications that are still using stock valve covers where valve cover clearance is critical and you don't want to have to run a tall valve cover. These will clear stock valve covers in most applications. It has a shorter rocker arm body and therefore uses a shorter poly lock. So everything as far as the stack up height of the assembly on the cylinder head is shorter. Uh, so you have more valve cover clearance as well. Again, same materials and tolerances and fits that we used in our race series stud mount application. The only difference here is it uses a 520 thousandths diameter roller on the nose as opposed to the 600 thousandths diameter. And as far as the pin on that roller as well, it is a little smaller diameter. It's about 220 thousandths instead of 245 thousandths on the pin. Um, outside of that, all the other components that it gets the same exact trunnion, retaining clips, bearings as the race series rockers. So that's our endurance series. We offer that for all of our applications as well. And the final stud mount configuration that we offer for rocker arms is what we call a narrow body and self-aligning. Um, they're both similar in design, but they're two very different uh, purposes. So the, this is actually a narrow body I have here. Uh, the narrow body and self-aligning are for the GM small blocks that have center bolt valve covers where the bolts that attach the valve covers to the cylinder heads would interfere with the standard uh, wider bodies of the rocker arms. They wouldn't actually clear those bolts that connect the, uh, the valve cover to the cylinder head. So the more slim body allows us to have the clearance for those center bolts that go through and actually mount the valve cover to the cylinder head in between the rocker arms on the head itself. Uh, the narrow body is just that. All it has is a narrower body um, and a, a, a narrower trunnion as well that goes with that body. As you can see, the trunnion doesn't hang outside the body and there's no clips out here at all. So this is the widest point. Um, so that narrow body would use a guide plate just like a normal stud mounted rocker arm and would clear the center bolt valve covers. Um, the self-aligning is the same exact body but a different roller. So instead of a standard roller, it actually has a roller with channels, uh, one channel in the center of it and two lips, two walls on the outside edges of the roller itself. So as opposed to a standard stud mount rocker using a guide plate to keep everything aligned, keep the push rod straight and keep the, the roller in contact with the valve and perfectly centered, it actually locates the, roll, the rocker assembly with that roller on the valve tip. So you don't need to use a guide plate. The roller in the self-aligning rocker actually acts as a guide plate and allows the roller to stay in contact with the valve without allowing it to move from side to side. And the roller will not slip off the valve and keeps everything aligned perfectly. Um, so that's our self-aligning and narrow body again for GM small blocks with the center bolt valve covers. Uh, we also offer our off-road series, uh, which is for the Jeeps, uh, the inline six cylinder Jeeps. We offer those for the 4.0, the 4.2, and several other applications as well. Again, in a standard configuration and adjustable configuration as the Jeeps are also pedestal mounted as well, similar to the LS and the small block and big block Fords. So those are our rocker arm offerings. We also do make fuel rails as well uh, for LS1 and LS3, L92 applications. And that's just a little bit about everything we offer. Um, as far as our standard rockers go and our newest product offerings are our shaft mount rocker arms. Uh, we make shaft mount rocker arms for small block Chevy and small block Ford for most of the popular cylinder head applications. And we are coming out with new applications readily as we get calls for different applications, more popular applications as cylinder head manufacturers come out with new cylinder heads and contact us that those are going to be available. We are keeping up with that and trying to add product offerings as we speak. Uh, so right now we do have the shaft rockers for all the most popular small block Chevy and small block Ford cylinder heads. And we're working on LS and big block and several other configurations as well. Uh, again, using a lot of the same components as our stud mounted rocker arms, but instead of obviously mounting to a stud or uh, using a pedestal to bolt to the cylinder head, uh, they actually have a stand that bolts to the cylinder head. And then the rocker pairs are on shafts and that shaft bolts to the stand. Um, so again, we use these for small block Chevy and small block Ford right now. And we also do have all of our shaft mount bodies with pressure fed oiling. So they feed up the push rod 
into the adjuster on the back of the rocker arm. And then we have oil channels drilled and milled into the rocker body itself. So it pressure feeds that oil directly into the bearing or bushing and then directly out the front to the roller and valve interface. And then also on the front under the nose for the valve spring only as well for the endurance applications to keep the valve springs cool, to extend the valve spring life and to uh, minimize any potential failures of the valve springs prematurely. Uh, so that's our standard shaft mount. And we also offer them with a bronze bushing upgrade in place of the needle bearing. Um, and that's our shaft mount rocker offerings right now. And finally, because of all the manufacturing and quality controls that we have on our processes, we do offer a lifetime warranty on all the products we manufacture. So that means if anything happens, uh, even if it's a potential defect or you hear something funny, you feel something funny, something doesn't seem to measure right, even if it's not an outright failure, you can contact us and get a hold of us and ask us exactly what may be going on. And we will give you an RGA number to send the product back to us. And then we will actually inspect it, do a full analysis on it. Um, if it is something that's failed in the field, whether it's related to the rocker itself or whether that's just collateral damage from another failure in the valve train itself, uh, we will do a full failure analysis on it, including metallurgical analysis as well to determine exactly what the failure mode was that that part had seen. And we will replace them free of charge, uh, regardless of the age of the rocker, whether you bought them from a distributor, whether you bought them online, whether you bought them direct from us, Either way, it's a 100% lifetime warranty, no questions asked. All we ask is that you contact us and you give us a few days to be able to perform that analysis work and get the actual answers and, and perform a root cause analysis as to what caused that failure to happen. A, so we can understand and better anything that we may be able to on our side of the fence, and B, we can eliminate any variables and any potential future failures with your specific application and your setup if there is another factor in your engine application that may be a component in that failure. Um, so 100% lifetime warranty, we stand behind everything we make. And the reason we stand behind everything we make is because we make it so that it does not fail and it outlives any expectations that the customer may have. In addition to that, just to be 100% transparent, we make over 300,000 rocker assemblies a year and we get fewer than 500 back with questions. And not all of those 500 are component failures. Some of those 500 are just for inspection because the rocker arms have seen two seasons of use in a circle track application and they're refreshing the engine. They want everything to be inspected to make sure they can bolt them back on again. So that's a very small percentage of the volume that we make that we actually see back and not all of that percentage is actually for a failure. A lot of it is just for routine inspection to make sure it's still safe to put back in use. Thank you.